So I'm going to read you a story from the book Homer Price again. I already read you guys the donuts. This time I'm going to read you the story of the cosmic comic. This is an interesting story because, one, it's about Superman, but it was written only eight years after Superman first appeared in comic books. So this is the author's impression of what he thinks of Superman and what he thinks basically good kids should think about Superman. Do I agree with him? Eh, not necessarily. Um, but it's a fun story anyway. So, the case of the cosmic comic. One Saturday afternoon, Homer and Freddy and Freddy's little brother Lewis were listening to the state college football game on the radio. After the game, Homer said, I'm feeling sort of hungry. Come on, Freddy. Come on, Lewis. Let's go down to the kitchen and get something to eat. They went downstairs, and Homer poured out three glasses of milk, and Homer's mother brought out the cookie jar. Don't eat too many cookies, she cautioned, because it's almost dinner time. No, ma'am, we won't, said Freddy. Then he said to Homer, Has tonight's newspaper come yet? I think so, said Homer. Yes, there it is on top of the refrigerator. Oh, boy, said Freddy, as he opened it to the comics page. Let's see what happened to the Super Duper. So Freddy and little brother Lewis and Homer gathered around the paper to see how the Super Duper was going to get out of the big steel box filled with dynamite where the villain had put him and dropped him into the middle of the ocean from an airship. There in the first picture, the Super Duper was saying, Ha ha! That villain thinks he can get rid of me, but he is mistaken. Then, in the next picture, the dynamite exploded and blew the steel box to bits. But that didn't hurt the Super Duper, because the Super Duper is so tough, tougher than steel, that nothing can hurt him. Just look at those muscles and that chest the Super Duper's got, said Freddy, before going on to the next picture. In the next picture, the Super Duper bounded up from the bottom of the ocean and went whizzing through the air. He caught the airship by the tail and broke it off with a loud crack. In the last picture, the villain was trying to escape in an airplane and was machine-gunning the Super Duper, but the bullets were just bouncing off his chest because he was so tough. Then it said, Continued on Monday. Boy, said Freddy, the Super Duper can do anything. Yeah, but it's only a story, said Homer, and the story's always the same. The Super Duper always hits things and breaks them up. The villain always tries to bomb him or shoot him with a cannon or a gun or an electric ray. Then he always rescues the pretty girl and gets the villain at the end. Well, it's just a story, said Freddy, because Super Duper's in the movie. Well, it isn't just a story, said Freddy, because Super Duper's in the movies, too. They take movies of him lifting battleships with one hand and, then, and even flying through space. Ah, uh, Homer said. I read a book once that said they do that sort of thing with wires and mirrors. It's just trick photography, that's all it is. Then little brother Lewis, who had been eating cookies all this this time, said, Read it to me. So Homer had to read it so Freddy had to read it all over again out loud and explain the story to little Lewis. Freddy called Homer's mother. Your mother just phoned and wants you to bring little Lewis right home. Okay, come on, Lewis, finish your milk. Goodbye, Homer. And thank you for the cookies. The next time Freddy came over to visit Homer, he brought along his super-duper comic magazines. Say, Homer, I thought you might like to look at these, said Freddy. Gosh, Freddy, you certainly have a lot of those comic magazines, said Homer. They don't cost much, said Freddy, only ten cents apiece. Here, read this one. Homer, it's the most exciting. Homer took the comic magazine and started to read, while Freddy looked over his shoulder. At the beginning of the story, the super-duper was dressed in ordinary clothes, just like any other man. Then, after the villains appeared on the second page, the Super Duper slipped behind a tree and changed into red tights and a long blue cape. Why does he always change clothes like that? asked Homer. That's just because he is so modest, said Freddy in a knowing way. Homer started reading again. After the Super Duper had changed his clothes, he started flying through space and smashing things. He picked up automobiles and tossed them over cliffs. He even carried a train across the river after the villain had blown up the bridge. And finally, he saved the pretty girl from a horrible death and caught the villain who turned out to be a very notorious criminal. Gosh, Freddy, these super-duper stories are all the same, said Homer. No, they're not, said Freddy. Sometimes the super-duper smashes airships, and sometimes he smashes ocean liners, then other times he just breaks up mountains. But he always rescues the pretty girl and catches the villain on the last page, said Homer. Of course, said Freddy. That's to show that crime does not pay. Shuck, said Homer. Let's go pitch horseshoes. Okay, said Freddy. Freddy won two games out of three, then said, 
Guess it's almost supper time. See you tomorrow, Homer. Yep, goodbye, Freddy, said Homer. And Freddy gathered up his comic magazines and went up the road home. After supper, when Homer was doing his homework, he heard the phone ring. Hello, said Homer. Hello, is that you, Homer? This is Freddy. Say, did you see in the paper tonight there's going to be a super-duper movie over at the Centerberg Theater next Saturday afternoon? Before Homer could say, no, I didn't, Freddy shouted, and guess what? The super-duper in person is going to be there. And Homer, Freddy went on, Mother has a box from the mail order house over at the Centerburg Railroad Station, so Dad says that little Lewis and I can take the horse and wagon and drive to Centerburg on Saturday. We can get the box and then go see the Super Duper. I thought you might like to come along. Sure thing, said Homer. Okay, we'll stop by for you, said Freddy. Goodbye, Homer. On Saturday, Freddy and little Lewis drove up to Homer's house with old Lucky hitched to the wagon just as Homer was finishing his lunch. I thought we'd better get an early start, said Freddy, because it takes old it's old Lucy, not old Lucky. Because it takes old Lucy about an hour to go as far as Centerburg. I'll be ready in just a second, said Homer. And then after Homer had cl had climbed in, Freddy said, Get up to old Lucy. And they started off to see the super duper in person. When they arrived in Centerburg, the first thing they did was go to the station and load the box from the mail order house into the back of the wagon. <clears throat> Gosh, that's heavy, said Homer as they lifted it on. Yeah, said Freddy, but I bet you the super duper could lift it with his little finger. Maybe so, said Homer. Let's stop over at Uncle Ulysses' lunchroom and get some donuts to eat in the movie. Freddy and little Lewis both thought that was a good idea, so they drove old Lucy around to the lunchroom to get some donuts. Then Freddy and little Lewis Then Freddy and little Lewis and Homer walked across the town square to the movie. The super-duper's super-streamlined car was standing in front of the theater. It was long and red with chromium trimmings, and it had the super-duper's monogram on the side. After they had admired the car, they bought three tickets and went inside. There, in the lobby, were the re was the real, honest-to-goodness super-duper. He shook hands with Freddy and Homer and little brother Lewis, and he autographed a card for Freddy, too. Mr. Super-duper... Would you please do a little flying through space for us? Or maybe just bend a few horseshoes, asked Freddy. I'm sorry, boys, but I don't have time today, said the Super Duper with a smile. So Homer and Freddy and little Lewis found three good seats and ate donuts until the picture began. The picture was called The Super Duper and the Electric Ray. That was because the villain had a machine that produced an electric ray, and every time he shined it on a skyscraper or an airplane, the skyscraper or the airplane would explode. He turned the ray on the Super Duper, too, but of course the Super Duper was so tough that it didn't hurt him. Little Lewis got so excited, though, that he choked on a donut, and Homer had to take him to the lobby for a drink of water. But finally, the Super Duper broke the villain's headquarters to bits and lifted the ray machine, which must have weighed several tons, and tossed it over a cliff. Then he caught the villain and rescued the pretty girl. But at the very end, the super villain... But at the very end, the villain slipped away again, and then these words appeared on the screen. Next installment. Next Saturday afternoon. Why did the Super Duper let the villain get away again? Asked little Lewis on the way out. I guess that's because he wants to chase him again next Saturday, said Homer. Outside, they admired the Super Duper's car once more, and then started home in the wagon. It was evening by the time old Lucy, pulling the wagon with Freddy and little Lewis and Homer on it, had reached the curve of the road just before you come to Homer's father's filling station. A horn honked from behind, and Freddy pulled, over, pulled old Lucy over to the edge of the road. Then swoosh! From around the rear sped the long red car with chromium trimmings. Gosh! It's the Super Duper, said Freddy. Well, he shouldn't drive so fast around this curve, said Homer, sort of doubtful-like. Almost before Homer had finished speaking, there was a loud screech of brakes and then a loud crash. Get up, Lucy, said Freddy. We better hurry and see what happened. Gee, there weren't any cars coming the other way, said Homer. I wonder what happened. Golly, said Freddy in a quavery voice. Do you suppose the electric ray? Whoa, Lucy. Whoa, Lucy, we better park here. Oh, shucks, said Homer in his bravest voice. I'm going to see what happened. Little Lewis began to cry, and Homer tried to comfort him. Lewis, that electric ray business was just part of a movie, and it couldn't have anything to do with this. Homer tried hard to make it sound convincing. 
Then Homer and Freddy and little Lewis got out of the wagon and crept along the side of the road. There, around the curve, was the Super Duper's car, down in a ditch. All three boys stopped crawling along and lay down on their stomachs to watch. Oh, boy, whispered Freddy. Now we'll get to see the Super Duper lift it back on the road with one hand. There was a flash of light, and little Lewis cried, Is that the electric ray? It's only the headlights of a car, said Homer. Come on, let's get a little closer. They crept a little closer. They could see the Super Duper now, sitting there in the twilight with his head in his hands. I wonder if he got hurt, asked Homer. Nah, whispered Freddy. Nothing can hurt the Super Duper because he's too tough. Well, if he isn't hurt, why doesn't he lift the car back on the road, asked Homer. Shh, said Freddy. He's an awful modest fellow. So they waited and watched from the bushes. The Super Duper sighed a couple of times, and then he got up and started walking around his car. Now watch, said Freddy in a loud whisper. Oh boy, oh boy. The Super Duper didn't lift the car. No, not yet. He looked at the dent that a fence post had made in his shiny red fender, and then the incredible happened. The colossal, awful, gigantic, antic, super duper, the same super duper who defied the elements, who was so strong that he broke up battleships like toothpicks, who was so tough that cannonballs bounced off his chest, yes, who was tougher than steel, he stooped down and said, Ouch! Yes, there could be no mistake. He said it again, louder. Ouch! The great super duper had gotten himself caught in a barbed wire fence. Well, well, for crying out loud, said Freddy. What happened? asked little Lewis. Did he get himself rayed by the villain? Come on, Freddy. Let's go and tangle him, said Homer. Then Freddy and little Lewis and Homer unsnagged the super duper. And he sighed again and said, thank you, boys. You know if there's a garage near here? It looks as though it will take a wrecking car to get my car out of this ditch. Sure, my father has a garage down at the crossing, said Homer. And we have a horse right up there on the road. We can pull your car out of the ditch, said Freddy. Well, now isn't that lucky, said the Super Duper with a smile. So they hitched old Lucy to the car, and she pulled, and everybody pushed until the car was back on the road. And little Lewis sat with the Super Duper in his car, and Homer and Freddy rode old Lucy back while she towed the car toward Homer's father's filling station. What happened, Mr. Super Duper? Did the villain ray you? asked little Lewis. No, said the Super Duper and laughed. <laughs> when I drove around that curve... There was a skunk right in the middle of the road. I didn't want to hit him and get this new car all smelled up, so I went into the ditch. Ha <laughs> ha! When they reached the filling station, they put some iodine on the scratches that the barbed wire had made in the Super Duper. He made faces just like anybody else who it was dabbed on when it was dabbed on. Then he ate a hamburger, and by that time, Homer's father had the car fixed, except for the dent in the fender. Before the Super Duper drove away, he thanked the boys and made them a present of a large stack of Super Duper comic books. After he'd gone, Homer and Freddy went back with old Lucy to get the wagon. Well, anyway, Freddy, we've got a complete set of super-duper comic books, said Homer. Yeah, said Freddy, then he said, Say, Homer, do me a favor, will you, and don't tell anybody about the super-duper and the barbed wire and the ditch and the iodine, especially Artie Bush. If he doesn't hear about this, I might be able to trade my comic books for that baseball bat of his, the Louisville Slugger, that's only slightly cracked. Okay, said Homer. Come to think of it, his cousin Skinny has a pretty good ball, too. This is a good time to get even for the time Skinny traded me a bicycle bell that wouldn't ring for my nearly new bugle. And that's the end of the story. Of course, those comic books would have been worth a ton of money if Freddy had kept them, but this was the 40s and nobody had any idea that any of that stuff would be worth money. <laughs>